Well, good morning. I'm so happy to see so many of you. And on behalf of the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency, I welcome you. And I hope you get a lot out of this today. There's a lot to know, a lot of information for you. And this will not be the only meeting we have. So my partner in crime here is, is going to do a historical uh, presentation on city. Thank you, thank you, Lois. Yes, just quickly, I'll give, give you a historic perspective of how we ended up with this agency and uh, what we have to do going forward. So as Dave mentioned, in 2015, the state passed a law requiring that every basin, groundwater basin in California, do exactly what we're doing and form an agency to help manage and regulate it. Now, the state had some different choices. Up until now, groundwater has not been regulated in the state of California. If you had a groundwater basin and you had a, a drill, you could make a well and, and pump away. But um, up, up till now, the state had an option, given some of the things that have been going on um, throughout the state with declining groundwater levels and uh, changing climates, that they could have regulated this from Sacramento. <clears throat> they could have just said, Okay, here it is, one size fits all, make it happen. Now, Jerry Brown, I kind of think in my heart that he had a lot to do with this in his wisdom, said let's try to do this at the local level and let's let each local groundwater uh, community see if they can manage their own. And we're gonna set out a list of guidelines of what they have to do to show us measurably that they are managing their groundwater sustainably now and into the future. So they created the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. Now under that act, we, first thing we had to do was get a groundwater boundary approved by the state, which we did, which we called the Santa Margarita Groundwater Basin, okay? And that got successfully completed, so one for our team. We did one job correctly. So our next job, is to come up with what's called, and all these acronyms will get annoying, but a GSP, which is a Groundwater Sustainability Plan, right? And what, with that plan, we have to do a number of things, but the main idea is to show that our groundwater basin is going to be sustainable for the next 20 years, and hopefully beyond. But you gotta start somewhere, right? So we have a certain timeline to get that plan done, and part of that plan may include mitigation measures or things we're going to have to do to make the groundwater more sustainable. But, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So we're in the process of beginning that part of the plan. One of the other big components is things like this. We have to get with our community and not only share with them what we're doing, right? That's why this is set up the way it is. We don't want this to be we're talking down to you. We want you to be talking with us. So it's a different level of community outreach than you're probably used to when, you know, the city council or someone, you know, wants to do something and they have to, uh, we have to have a public meeting and we got to get some people up here and they can say we hate this or we want to, it's got to be more than that. It's got to be true community engagement. So that's, that's what we're doing right now. Now, if you don't know who the members of this agency are, it's really everyone who has a stake in, in the groundwater here. It is um, the San Lorenzo Valley Water District, Scotts Valley Water District, the Mount Hermon Association, um, the County of Santa Cruz, and the City of Santa Cruz. Now you might ask what's the county and the city have to do with this basin? Well, the county regulates all of the private pumpers, right? Everyone that has not associated with a water agency either is an individual home with a well or a larger group with a well, like a small municipal or a group of people that share a well together, okay? So all of the, and, and the City of Santa Cruz, of course, depends on A, the San Lorenzo River for their water, and B, Loch Lomond is also up in this basin. So they have an interest in what goes on in the basin. 
the two founding agencies, or the three, I should say, it, what are the member agencies and, and have probably the most power are the um, San Lorenzo Valley Water District, Scotts Valley, and the County of Santa Cruz. I'm correct about that. So um, it's all also about all of us really working together. Now, you would think this is the first time that any this group has ever been together doing something like this. Why didn't they do this before? Well, the truth is, is that the, we've been doing this for about 10 years on our own before the state asked us to on an advisory level. We had the Santa Margarita Groundwater Advisory Committee, and we were meeting with essentially that same group of people, except maybe the city of Santa Cruz wasn't a member of that group. But we were all getting together, and I've known Lois for about 10 years because she was um, with Lompico at the time and was coming to all those meetings. So we've been doing this, but you know, informally and without the power we now have. Now we're a real government regulating agency. And we have actually have enforcement powers to make sure that th the plan that we write gets enforced and, and everyone's got to live by it and do it. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big deal to take on. I think it's uh, an amazing opportunity statewide for communities to work together to, to really achieve something important. So I'm, I'm glad we have it, and I'm actually very hopeful that it's, uh, it's really going to be a, a, a wonderful thing. So that's, and I'm missing anything, Dave, is anyone, anything big? Okay, so now we're going to go down, and Lois is going to tell us a little bit about the, uh, the purpose of this workshop. So this is the start of three workshops. Uh, there will be another one. February 9th, and then the third one, March the 9th. And the purpose of all this is because we get that there is a long-standing concern about land use, uh, about uh, growth, and about water, and how is it going to affect and so these, we are starting this meeting talking about land use and how it's going to affect us all in the basin. So we hope that you will find all of that interesting and we'll answer some of your questions, but you're going to have a lot of time tonight. I should say this morning, sorry, I'm used to meetings being at night. Uh, so, the purpose of the workshop is so you can learn what's it all about, Alfie. Uh, the agenda is going to start off with the speakers focusing on land planning and growth in general. And I hear a lot of remarks from people about growth. It seems that growth might be getting out of control, except here in the San Lorenzo Valley, we don't have any place to grow. And there's going to be interactive breakouts between all the speakers, uh, so you will have your chance to be involved. There will be a panel at the end that will answer all your questions. And I hope that you're happy with the answers and come away from this meeting feeling like you really learned something today. And it's important. It's very, this is so important. I can't tell you how important this is. Thank you for being here. Um. So I'm going to introduce our first uh, speaker. Many of you, I'm sure, know John Laird, but just in case you don't, and you might not know as much as I've learned about him, but uh, he is a Californian raised in Vallejo, son of teachers. But then after that, I think his heart and his place has been in Santa Cruz County. John graduated from UCSC with honors. He did a long stint on the Santa Cruz City Council, was the executive director of the Santa Cruz AIDS Project, 
He was on the Cabrillo College Board of Trustees and Of course then spent time in the assembly until they termed him out they threw him out He stayed too long did too good a job, and they said you got to go um, When he was there he passed 82 writ wrote 82 bills that were passed and some of the landmark ones uh, created the um, Sierra Nevada Conserv Conservancy. He brought back um, community college health services. He put in legislation that uh, expanded civil rights um, in the state of California and also, very appropriately, re legislation that uh, really expanded water conservation in California. Um, he finished out his career as the um, secretary of the California Resources Board, so resource, secretary of resources, right? Natural resources. And um, that capped 40 years of uh, public service. John and his spouse, John Flores, a longtime Santa Cruz resident, and inexplicably, as a native Californian, John is a lifelong Chicago Cubs fan. There's a story behind that, and I'll get to hear it one of these days. Okay, before I bring John up, please, your cards. And remember, turn in the cards if he did the green card. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Lair. 